Oh yeah, man, I'm super excited about the next video. Oh, what the hell was that? No. <laughs> oh hey, what's up everyone? Jovan D here, and you may have noticed that I have a big microphone here and I'm wearing a headset. That's because I broke my lavalier mic. The audio on this thing sounds great. So I apologize if the audio is weird this time around during this video, but anyways, have you ever wondered how to bring pain and misery to those around you? Well good, because I'm here to teach you how to damage your characters in Unreal Engine 4. We are going to create a The Floor is Lava game. If you followed the previous two videos, you should have a basic third person character blueprint with a name and health appearing on the viewport when you begin play. And we are going to make that character suffer. Let's not waste any more time. Open up your project and we need to create six things in total. One, a function for our third person character blueprint to lower our character's health. Two, this one's more just for fun, but it's a death function to have our character die when his health reaches zero. Three, we need our health bar to change colors dependent on our current health value. Four, a basic level design for fun level to hop around in. Five, a damage actor. This is going to deal damage to any third person character blueprint that walks inside. And lastly, we have number six, a visual representation of lava, which will include a basic material. Making this mini game is going to be broken down into three videos. In this video, we'll create the character functions for damage and for dying. Part 2 will be all about changing the visual colors of our health bar, and it's going to include some basic level design. Part 3 will cover creating a damage actor and a lava material. There's a lot to cover, so let's create our damage function. Let's open up our third person character blueprint, and we are going to create a new function. But to teach you what a function is, we're going to do everything directly here on the event graph. Let's get rid of our print string since we really don't need our name to be print stringed on screen anymore. Is print string a word? And we'll now have our E key deal damage to our character instead, and this is how it's done. Let's go ahead and get our health variable, and we'll subtract it by a float. This value here is going to be the amount that's going to be subtracted every single time you hit the E key. I'm going to make mine 0 0.25 and then we will go ahead and set our health value to the return value of this math equation. This is telling the engine every single time I hit the E key, get my current health, go ahead and subtract it by 0 0.25, get that value and go ahead and set my current health to that instead. You can see how our health would get pretty low after every single time we hit the E key. Go ahead and compile and save, and when we play, we can go ahead and lower our health bar every single time we hit the E key, but you'll notice that nothing happens when we get to zero health, and we can go past zero health into the negative. So let's fix that, and let's kill our character when his health reaches zero. Let's go back to the event graph, and after we set our health here to our new damaged value, we can check to see if this new value is less than or equal to zero. All we have to do is drag off of our health, search for less than or equal to float, and it's going to check to see if this value is less than or equal to whatever value you type in here. We do want to check to see if the value is less than or equal to zero. Go ahead and drag off the boolean return value, and we're going to go ahead and get a branch. I believe this is our first branch that we've ever gone over on the channel, and welcome to your first look at why variables are really, seriously, your best friend. Branches are super powerful. So a branch is a powerful tool because it checks to see if its condition is true or false. In this case, the condition is if our health is less than or equal to zero. If that's true, it'll go ahead and execute the true path. If it's not, it'll go ahead and execute the false path. In this case, we don't want anything extra to happen. If our health is above zero, we'll just take damage like normal. So we actually won't plug in anything to the false value. It'll just end right here. But if our health is zero or less, we want our character to die, so we're going to have additional things execute off of the true condition. Now usually in a video game, there are a few things that happen when you die. First, the player inputs are disabled, so you can't still move around, you know, since you're kind of dead and all. <laughs> Second, the player plays a death animation. In our case, we don't have one, so we're just going to ragdoll. And third, in some games, time slows down so the death animation looks better or the ragdoll looks better. Let's start with disabling input. 
we'll go ahead and right click on the event graph go ahead and search for disable input if I could type correctly today go ahead and put that right on the true path we do want our third person characters input to be disabled so leave this on self since we're putting this in the third person character blueprint branch off of here go ahead and look for player controller second we need our character to ragdoll and this one's pretty easy all we have to do is get the character mesh component from the blueprint we'll go ahead and drag off and all we need to do is set simulate physics to true that will begin our ragdoll for our character lastly and this one's totally optional we can go ahead and add a time dilation set global time dilation and I'm gonna set this to something like 0.2 when we go ahead and play the game, we'll hit E until our character dies, and we'll see our character slowly sink through the floor. So our ragdoll is not working correctly. We kind of just fell directly through the floor. There's actually two things that are wrong, so let's fix them. Number one, if we go to our character mesh, we can see that their collision is actually not what it needs to be if we want them to ragdoll properly. Currently, our collision presets are set to character mesh. All we have to do is go down here, select block all dynamic. We'll get deeper into collision presets in the future, but all you need to know is that block all dynamic will prevent the mesh from falling through the floor. Now when we play, we can have our character die, and the ragdolls work, but we kind of get launched off to the side, and this is the second thing that we need to fix. If we go to our viewport, we can actually see that when we simulate physics on the mesh, it collides with the collision capsule of its own blueprint. So we need to turn off the physics collision for the capsule when the character dies. That way our character doesn't fly off to random locations when he dies. And to do that, we'll go ahead and drag our capsule component off here. All we have to do is set collision enabled. Go ahead and move these off to the side because we want this to happen before we simulate physics on the mesh and we'll set it to query only. That should go ahead and fix our ragdoll problem. You don't want to set it to no collision because if you do that and then your character dies, the collision capsule will actually go directly through the floor just like our mesh did before. So make sure that we're on query only. So now our character can take damage and our character dies when they're at 0% or less health, but our graph is kind of messy. In our graph, we have this long execute off of the E key and we can clean this up by creating functions. Functions actually have many uses, and one of them is for cleaner visual scripting. If we select everything that happens when our character dies, we can go ahead and right click on one of them, and we can collapse to a function. Now you can see all of that code is contained in this function, and it will appear over here on the top left. Let's go ahead and rename it to something like character died. Now we know during this branch, if our health is less than zero, we'll go ahead and call all of these when our character dies. We can select all these, including our function, go ahead and collapse that down to a function, and we'll name that something reasonable like take damage. And now every single time we take damage, it'll run all of the script that we did before, including our character died function. So all of this coding that we did is held within this one custom function that we made during this whole video. And yes, you can have functions within functions, and that is what we call Funkception. <laughs> That's going to bring this video to a close. Be on the lookout for parts two and three in the next few days. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to help out this channel for free by liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm here to help you think like a game developer, so stick around for more videos like this.